How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to be talking about Leicester because they missed out on an opportunity to join Liverpool and Spurs at the top end of the table. Um, we're also going to take a look at the FA Cup draws because there's a big fairy tale draw in there. Um, and the last piece of news involves Thomas Partey because it looks like his injury is going to keep him out to January at the earliest. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing, guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start was last night's game between Leicester and Fulham. And I suppose if you were a betting man, you would have banked on Leicester to win that, especially with them playing at home. Um, Leicester... Um, I've had a really, really good start to the season. A couple of dodgy results in there, but overall, very, very happy with the way things are going. And a victory for them would have taken them joint top of the Premier League table along with Spurs and Liverpool. And Fulham, they're in the relegation zone, but they're not anymore. And um, ironically, Fulham get another penalty. Now, we've all seen what's happened with Fulham and penalties. Um, over the last few weeks. Now, they've missed their last three in a row, but their last two in particular have been very well documented. Now, Lookman, we all remember his penalty and the attempted panicker. And um, yeah, that did uh, not go too well. And then last time out, uh, <laughs> it was um, Calavero. He slipped over kicked it into his standing foot and it flew over the bar. Well, it was him that actually took this penalty and he scored it. And uh, Lookman as well also scored the first goal and um, he celebrated with a tribute um, to Papa Bupa Diop, who sadly lost his life over the weekend, um, which we spoke about briefly on yesterday's show. 42 um, years old and he'd been battling an illness for a long time and um, he had sadly passed away. Um, Leicester got a goal back with around about five minutes or so to go but it was too little too late and um, I'm very 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 shocked at that and I think that just kind of shows how strange this Premier League season is that um, you've got games that you look you know on paper and you say yeah, home win there or an away win there. And it looks pretty simple. But for some reason, this season, no game is simple anymore. You know, even the ones that you do kind of look at and think that's going to be a guaranteed, you know, home victory, for example. They might get the home victory, but then they might scrape through. Um, when I watched Manchester City against Burnley over the course of the weekend, that was one of the games where... You know, you fought beforehand, given past matches at the Etihad, they were going to batter Burnley. And it actually happened. But a lot of fixtures throughout the course of this season just hasn't been going like that. But yeah, this one, Leicester, they'll be gutted about that because they had a big opportunity to join Liverpool and Spurs, like I said, at the top of the table. And they've blown it. And uh, Fulham... They actually move out of the relegation zone with that victory. So that's a big, big one for them. And um, fair play to them because that's a very, very good result. And not many teams are going to go to the King Power and pick up three points this season. Um, now, of course, yesterday was FA Cup third round draw. Arsenal, of course, the holders. And um, I won't talk too much about you know, Arsenal's tie because we drew home tie against Newcastle and that has the makings of an absolutely boring game. It's not going to get televised or anything. That's just there's nothing inspiring about it in any way, shape or form. I suppose the only thing we could possibly look at is that if he's still here, William Saliba might actually get a game. Um, but the big, big tie of the whole round is um, non-league Marine of the 8th tier are home against Spurs. Now, to put that into perspective for everybody that doesn't realise the tier system in non-league and everything else, is that they are in what's known as step four. 
They are effectively three divisions above DTFC. Three divisions. They are one division above Hashtag United. Now, being in what area you may be, they're not going to be playing Hashtag DTFC or anything like that. They're in a, a northern section and you've got southern sections and everything. But there's... You know the same steps throughout those areas of the country wherever it might be so they are a step four team which as i was saying is three divisions above where my team dtfc are and uh one above where hashtag united will be at the moment um who of course are in the essex senior league um in step five wow that is insane when you think that these teams as well, they don't just go into the first round proper or anything like that. They have preliminary rounds and they have to play five, six games or whatever it is before they even get to a first round. And then to get to a third round and draw a Premier League team. That is insane. That will, you know, ultimately probably, you know, keep that, you know, club. Um, I don't know what their financial situation is and everything else. We all know that non-league teams have been really struggling through the current pandemic. But, um, you know, as long as they can get fans in the stadium of some sort and everything else, and I suppose with the TV, because that game's going to be on television and everything, the money that they will receive from that will be staggering. And that will be them set for years and years and years just from this one cup run. And that is literally the magic of the cup um, and how amazing it is. Um, I don't know whether, you know, the game may well get moved to Spurs. Um, I'm not sure. I think that their stadium, you know, given the current pandemic as well, is more than capable of, you know, hosting um, Spurs. Um, you know, we had the same similar kind of thing. Um, a few years ago with one of our games and um, yeah we was playing a team you know not as low down as what Marina um, but yeah the game was you know still played there and everything else and I suppose if you were allowed you know full capacity in stadiums it would benefit them swapping the game around because even though it would be at Spurs Marine would still be the home team which means they get, you know, the mass percentage of the gate receipts and everything else. So, you know, if fans were all back into stadiums as normal and there were 60,000 people in there, then it makes absolute financial sense why Marine would want to change things around. But given the current pandemic and everything else and the fact that, you know, come January time, I think there's still only going to be 2,000 fans in a the stadium, then not really going to get much of a benefit and it would play into Tottenham's hands because you never know playing there you know small little pitch um, in comparison to the Premier League pitches anyway um, I don't know what Marines pitch is actually like if it's a proper proper old school type non-league pitch it's muddy and horrible and you know what will Spurs do? What will Jose Mourinho do? Will he take some of those first team players down there? I think he will, you know, have that sense of an obligation that he will, you know, want to take some of the big names down there, the likes of Harry Kane and whatnot. Um, but then there's also the other factor of risk of injuries or whatever it might be. So it'd be interesting to see what happens and um, if they could even beat them. Oh my God, that would be banter all over that would but can't see it happening but yeah the draw in itself um there's some decent um you know ties in there for some of the non-league sides Chorley playing at home against Derby that's a big one for them Southampton against Shrewsbury Town um Wolves Crystal Palace not really inspiring is it it's just another Premier League game um, Stockport County against West Ham, Oldham, Bournemouth, Man United, Watford, um, Stevenage, Swansea, Everton, Rotherham, um, Forest, Cardiff, Barnsley, Tranmere, Bristol Rovers, Sheffield United, um, Canvey Island or Boreham Wood against Millwall. 
Um, still be a big game for them, but either one of those would have loved to have got a Premier League team. No disrespect to Millwall, but yeah, when you get that far, you want to have one of the big names, don't you? Blackburn, Doncaster, Stoke, Leicester, Wickham, Preston, Crawley Town against Leeds United. Good, you know, tie for Crawley, that one. Burnley, MK Dons, Bristol City, Portsmouth, QPR, Fulham. Bit of a derby, that one. Um, Aston Villa, Liverpool. That's an interesting tie. Most definitely an interesting tie. Um, Brentford, Middlesbrough, Man City, Birmingham. Man City, man, with their ties, man. They just get some real favourable ones, don't they? Um, Luton against Reading, Chelsea, Morecambe. What a tie that is for Morecambe, though. Exeter, Sheffield Wednesday, Norwich versus Coventry, Blackpool, West Brom, Newport County versus Brighton, and Cheltenham Town versus Mansfield Town. So, yeah, FA Cup third round, and um, Arsenal, you know, kick off the defence of their uh, trophy um, against Newcastle. But the big game, like I was saying, is Marine against Spurs. Um, last piece of news. Um, and I look at this and I just sit there scratching my head and I'm just like, really? <sighs> Looks like Thomas Partey is going to be out until January um, or the end of December at least. Um, and there's still no definitive answer on how long exactly, but apparently it's the next few games some reports are saying it's six weeks if you include, you know, the two weeks or so that he's missed already. Um, I'd actually say it's three weeks when you look at a two week international break. Yes, three weeks. So maybe another three weeks or so, which takes him up to around about the Boxing Day kind of area. Um, but it's not great. I think I see a statistic earlier on saying the last couple of years or so he's missed about six games for Atletico Madrid and... You know, he comes to Arsenal and bang, he's beaten that record already within the space of a couple of weeks. It's like, come on, man. Really? Um, and you know what? I sensed this and I said this only a week ago when um, they were reading out the press conferences for players to go into the Molder game in the Europa League. And I said about Saka and Willian and they made it clear that both of them you know, we're going to be available for the Wolves game at the weekend. And um, when it came to Thomas Partey, they were just saying that he's continuing rehabilitation. And I was like, mm, something don't sound right there. That's worse than we might think. And Mikel Arteta confirmed it, that it's worse than first, you know, feared. Um, I was hoping he was going to be back for the North London derby at the weekend, but he's not. So, um it's not great at all, is it? But, God, man, when it rains, it pours at the moment at this football club, man. It's just like, how's your luck? That it's just Arsenal to a T that a man can have such a great injury record. And then he comes to Arsenal and it turns to shit. And he's now injured within the space of a couple of weeks. And he's now missing more games than he did in a few years whilst at Atletico. And it's like, come on, man, just give us a break, please, man. But yeah, we're going to have to make do without him because it looks like Thomas Partey is going to be out until the end of December. Um, you know, in worst case, it's going to go into January <sighs> from something that looks so innocuous. And we end up losing players for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. It is what it is. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I'll see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.